Hey, and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for joining us once again, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And special guest. We have a special guest. <laughs> Matt Brennelson. I'll pronounce that for you because I know you can't. <laughs> No, we've, we, I think we got that down by now, but uh, Matt Brindleson, uh, Brewmaster of Firestone Walker, so so glad to have you uh, on the show and yeah. just in town in Chicago. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we are here because you're throwing out some new beers for us in our, into our Chicago market, and I, I think this is pretty much your entire portfolio at this point. Correct. So, so we're uh, fully into it at this right. point. Yeah, so <laughs> about a year and a half ago, we put the Proprietor's Reserve um, lineup here in Chicago, which are more of our special beers barrel-aged beers along with um, our double IPA and our Wookie Jack uh, okay. black the, IPA. The expensive beers, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, and there's a reason for that, a couple different reasons. One, we were shipping them in smaller quantities. They're higher price point, so it makes a little more sense from a shipping and financial standpoint. Okay. Shelf but, life and all that. And, and that's the other part, is right. the quality control part. Those are the stronger beers and, you know, I always say it's a seeding activity. We're, we're kind of going into a market and see how things are right. received. So, so if they weren't um, selling then we wouldn't have this new stuff, right? right? Yeah, and, nice you know, work, guys. And, and it means a <laughs> lot to me drinking. because uh, <laughs> I lived in Chicago for five years, as you know, and so I kind of consider this my hometown in some ways, and to have it so well received here really means a lot to me. Thanks, thanks Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're so thrilled to have, uh, we're, I mean, we were thrilled to have just your beer in general, and now to have the entire portfolio. I mean, you guys are making some of the best beers in the country, so we're, uh, we're super thrilled to have it. I'm telling you, this is a, people probably don't realize it, but Chicago's a pretty well-developed craft beer market, and there's some great beers here, and uh, so to be received well means a lot to us. Um, and actually, the brewery is better known for our sessionable beers like Pale 31, DBA, mm -hmm. and our seasonal beers. So those are the beers that I'm actually most proud of, so it's, it's nice to have them here and available. So those are the ones that are here. This, this week is kind of like the launch of it, right? Correct, so it's, yeah. DBA. It's almost like a relaunch for Firestone in a way. And, um, so it's DBA, Pale 31. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then right now we have Velvet Merlin, which is our oatmeal stout. Uh, that's our winter seasonal. You almost seasonal. said Merkin. I, I almost said Merkin. <laughs> it is. In, in my heart of hearts, it is Merkin. So, you know, as the story goes, like, that's a beer I've been brewing since when I was a home brewer. Um, and then when they asked me to make it, I came up with this name. The owners didn't actually even think about what a Merkin was. Mm -hmm. And so for years, we called it Merkin, but it was only available in our t tasting rooms. And then when we went to launch bottle product, somebody actually Googled what a Merkin is. And they're like, wait a second. We <laughs> and so they changed it to the Merlin. They tamed it down. But uh, actually, we will be releasing Velvet <coughs> Merkin later this year, which is the bourbon barrel aged version right. of the product. So, yeah. Beautiful. Well. Um, I want to talk personally. Want to talk about one of my favorite beers out there right now, and that's DBA. And because uh, there's, there's there's such a unique process that goes along with this, uh, and, and DBA obviously short for double barrel ale. Walk us through how you actually produce that beer. Yeah. So, um, kind of at the cornerstone or the you know the foundational piece of our brewing program are oak barrels, and the family that started the brewery, uh, Adam Firestone, David Walker, are winemakers. And from day one, their notion was barrel fermented ales. Mm -hmm. And when they did their research um, to get this process going, they turned their attention to 150 years ago, the, the state of the art in fermentation technology was the Burton Union system in Burton on Trent, three hours north yeah. of London. And so that is a system by which you start the primary fermentation in stainless steel until the yeast grows to high croissant, which basically means they've gotten to the peak of their. Uh, initial fermentation or growth, they've overwhelmed their environment, and then we move the beer from stainless steel to oak barrels and allow the fermentation to proceed in oak barrels. And a couple things happen. One, we use new medium toast American oak, so we get this really nice kind of vanilla mm -hmm. oak essence. We always say that oak is the fifth element. We use water, malt, hops, yeast, and oak. Yeah. All right. Um, but on top of that, and it's a little harder to point like to the scientific reasons, but because of the geometry of the barrel and the surface area, you get a much different fermentation, so you get this really gentle estuary profile mm. in the beer. So there's good reason the brewers in Burton-on-Trent turned to barrels for fermentation, and of course with the advent of stainless steel, brewers kind of forgot that art 
And so, again, we're trying to kind of recapture that. And our twist on that is using new oak that imparts this really wonderful vanilla characteristic to the beer. Well, it's, I mean, the, it just creates a, a super deep complexity, especially for a, a beer that's uh, completely sessionable. And, yeah, was uh, it like 5%? 5% yeah. beer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and since we're here in Chicago, what's interesting about that beer, and there's no... I worked at Goose Island for five years, and that recipe was developed in 96, long before I came to the company. But it's interesting how closely... Um, akin it is to Honker's Ale, actually, right. which I always thought was a wonderful English pale ale example. It is. And so DBA is a little different. It's got a little richer malt characteristic, probably uses more caramel malt. Um, interestingly enough, it uses Styrian Goldings, similar mm -hmm. to Honker's Ale. It uses East Kent Goldings as well. So on paper, it's an English pale ale or an English bitter. And the twist is this oak component. That's really cool. Yeah, it's cool because you really don't see too many of those beers coming out from, uh, you know, U.S. craft beer makers anymore. And yeah, I mean, it's nice I, I suppose it's, it, English ale isn't as cool <laughs> yeah. as American hoppy ale. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's a reason why those beers captured the attention of the world in their day because mm -hmm. they're super sessionable. They're yeah. like gentle, easy drinking, herbal hop characteristic versus the whole big citrus in your face thing. So there's definitely a place for it. There's no doubt. Absolutely. Along with, um, you know, you pale 31 and, and we're, we're tasting some Velvet Merlin today too. And, you know, because we're getting old, we can't, we can't play along with those. Like, I don't say old. And, uh, <laughs> I don't say old. It's anymore, just I'm so. a little guy. I don't have as much blood pulsing through my veins as, as the bigger guys out there. Right. So I need low alcohol beers, session beers. So, yeah. So welcome to the market. Happy yeah. to have you. Yeah. And uh, cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, you guys, for watching Hopcast.